So for Helen, we're going to fill out some of the lines and wrinkles around the mouth. And this is probably one of the treatments that used to be considered one of the easiest things to do in aesthetic practice. But actually, I would say that it's probably now one of the most technically challenging areas of the face to fill. And that's because there's a tendency to overfill in this area in an effort to try and get the lines and wrinkles uh, pushed back out. Um, you keep on injecting more and more filler and okay, it takes the lines and wrinkles away, but it ends up creating quite a bottom heavy look to the face. So the challenge here is getting enough filler in um, to be able to erase or soften the wrinkle, but without weighing down the bottom half of the face. And actually that's quite a difficult thing to do. So I've changed the way that I inject my fillers in this area over the last few years. I now inject much smaller volumes and I inject it much more superficially close to the surface of the skin. Um, and by injecting it really close to the surface of the skin, um, it allows me to plump the wrinkle out um, without giving the skin the bo that bottom heavy feel. The wrinkles we're going to fill out today are the nasolabial fold, a little bit into the marionette lines down here, some into the mental crease across here, and a few into these little vertical lines across the top of her lip. We can see when Helen's sitting up that uh, she's got a prominent cheek here and her lip sitting back here. If I fill from her lip going all the way up to the cheek and create a smooth contour here, it might look nice in the photograph, but it will look really unnatural in real life, especially when the face tries to move. So what I'm trying to get rid of is just this ingrained bit at the base of the wrinkle coming around here. And you can see that the ingrained part also extends into a few little lines and wrinkles here, coming down here. Um, we've got this little crease coming around here. Now the fashion in injecting fillers is to always use a cannula. And I really like using cannulas in certain parts of the face, but there are some areas where I find that a traditional old-fashioned needle actually gives you the best result. The cannula is really nice if you're trying to inject some deep volume in the subcutaneous plane, um, which means underneath the surface of the skin, but you cannot get a cannula to inject filler directly into the surface of the skin. Um, the only way to do that is with a needle. And to take out these lines and wrinkles here, um, it's much better if we get the filler sitting directly in the skin itself rather than underneath. The traditional way for injecting these lines and the wrinkles around the mouth is to stick the whole needle in and deposit a big layer of product directly under the surface of the skin. But actually all I'm really doing is piercing the tip of the needle through the surface of the skin, allowing some of the product to flow forwards in that immediate spot. This is something we call a serial bolus technique. Um, and I find it a much more precise way of injecting fillers in this region. It is more technically challenging doing it this way and it takes more time to be able to do it this way, but the net effect of it is well worth it. Okay, I'll just turn slightly. The packet the filler comes in says that it's supposed to last nine to 12 months. In practice, I find that it never actually does that. I think it always lasts much longer than that. And that's really important with this because the temptation is to refill every six to nine months. But if you do that, you end up getting an accumulation of product and it starts to look unnatural. Um, so I would say that I rarely refill this area any more frequently than every 18 months, every two years. And when we're doing refills at that stage, I almost always use less product than what I did the first time. The key to all of these aesthetic procedures is avoiding making things look overdone. So because we're piercing the skin so many times, you always get a little bit of bleeding with this, um, which is fine. The key point with all of this bleeding is that it is superficial um, and it very rarely ever gives a bruise. So when you stick the uh, needle in deep and bury around underneath the surface of the skin, Quite often can do that with very little bleeding, but quite a lot of bruising afterwards. Whereas with this, you sometimes uh, get a little bit more oozing initially, but actually it's pretty rare to cause any sort of significant bruising with this. So it always looks a little bit more dramatic initially, but actually it calms down much quicker than normal. So every type of filler that I use in the face um, is made of hyaluronic acid. I never use anything that's not made of hyaluronic acid. And the reason for that is that hyaluronic acid is reversible. So if someone doesn't like it, if they have a reaction, 
if they just change their mind and want rid of it, you can inject an enzyme that, um, that breaks it down and it's gone pretty quickly. Um, the chances of needing to do that is pretty minimal, but it's just always nice having at the back of your head that actually, worst case scenario, the filler can be dissolved. So again, using this superficial injection technique is really nice for dealing with these tiny little lines that a lot of women get on their upper lip. In total, that took around 15-20 um, 20, minutes to treat that entire area. So, although it's, um, it's a little bit longer than the traditional way, which might only take two or three minutes, um, in the grand scheme of things, it's actually it's not that long. Um, she looks a little bit red and angry right now, but actually most of that will calm down pretty quickly. She'll be able to put her makeup back on and hide the redness. And, um, go back to normal activities pretty much straight away.